So I'm Professor Rachel Skinner. I'm also in the discipline of, of child and adolescent health here at Sydney University with Kate Steinbeck and um, part of the CRE. I'm going to talk about health literacy. Um, it's an important part of our CRE, an important outcome is for us to promote and support health literacy in young people. So just to remind you that health literacy is a person's ability to access, understand, appraise and apply health information in order to take decisions on their health care, their um, disease prevention and health promotion in order to improve and support their health and quality of life throughout their life course. So it is very um, strongly linked to general literacy, but it's broader than general literacy. But, um, and just as with general literacy, it is correlated with health outcomes. And we believe that promoting health literacy may improve health outcomes, although um, the research to completely support that hasn't yet been um, confirmed. So it's a developing area. So what about adolescents? Is health literacy also important for adolescents? Well, we believe that it is because adolescents are at a stage in their life when they're developing independence and agency. And they're starting to take um, decisions that and engage in behaviours that will have um, impacts on their health in the current time and also into the future. So they, they are, it, for them, it's really important at this stage of life that they also have the same, or they have access to developing the same skills around health literacy as do adults. But it's important to be aware when we're looking at the health literacy of young people and how can we support that, that young people face specific challenges accessing health information and health care. So we need to think about that in the, in the design of um, interventions to support their health literacy. So they may not um, have the same ability to recognise their own health needs. They may not be familiar and experienced enough to do that. They also experience difficulties finding the right information that is designed in a way that they can understand. Um, their own level of agency, um, their own uh, level of um, independence and, and competencies impacts upon their level of uh, um, health literacy. They experience structural barriers to accessing health care. So health services are really designed for the adult population and parents. So they in, in, incur a cost, which young people are often not able to meet. Um, they may involve needing to actually uh, get to a location that where they need transport, they don't have transport, they may um, not have opening hours at times that young people can access them out of school hours, for instance. So, and also professionals, uh, health professionals' knowledge, skills and attitudes impact upon young people's ability to access healthcare. So professionals don't always have the skills to, to, to understand um, the various developmental issues and their healthcare issues and be able to communicate effectively with young people. They also may have certain attitudes that um, create a barrier for young people to feel comfortable about talking about things that are important to them. So the service environment themselves, um, sometimes not welcoming um, for young people and certainly support from parents does help so where they don't have support, that can be a challenge. So, so there are certain groups of adolescents, particularly vulnerable adolescents and um, transitioning adolescents, so young people with chronic illness who are transitioning from paediatric to adult care, and then young people whose health issue is of a confidential nature. These, these young people face specific um, challenges because they're often doing it on their own and they're dealing with a more complex system and complex number of of issues that they have to overcome. So we were in several of the CIs on this CRE were involved in the Access 3 study, which was funded by the Ministry of Health and it's looking at the um, barriers to accessing healthcare for young people in vulnerable groups. So um, that includes young people 
who are homeless or in out of home care or at risk of homelessness, young people who are LGBTQ, um, refugee, at sea young people and rural and remote and chronic young people with chronic illness. And they are, that identified a range of, of barriers, additional barriers for that group and really um, you know, these young people provided very salient um, stories about the, the challenges that they had. So vulnerable young people have multiple morbidities, so they need to go often go and see multiple health providers. And those health providers are often in different locations and um, they have different systems. So, and, and many of the health providers don't necessarily have familiarity with, with dealing with the young people themselves. So you can imagine the additional challenges that that presents to a young person who has no adult support and no person to help guide them to navigate what they think of as a fragmented health system. So um, what are we doing to promote health literacy in, in adolescents? So the, the investigators in this CRE and, and, um, and also facilitated by this CRE, we're developing a number of, of different solutions. So firstly, the, um, the Intergenerate Living Labs, which is, um, these are run by Pip Collins, Amanda Third, and Teresa Swift, and she'll tell you a bit more about them um, in her talk. But they're an exciting way to engage young people in developing solutions, including e-health solutions. So, um, it, so the, they are a, um, a user-centred, open, innovative eco-centre where co-design and design of interventions, testings and ways to scale successful in interventions with young people specifically can be undertaken. So it's an exciting area of work and we'll be able to apply a lot of the uh, findings of our research to developing interventions through these living labs. So our um, investigators, Lena Sanchi in Melbourne, have been working hard at developing interventions to upskill doctors in effective youth-friendly practice, so to address some of those barriers that I mentioned, using tools that help facilitate the discussion and identification of issues that are important for the young people, and also uh, working in the Doctors in Schools project, so doctors actually being located in schools to um, facilitate ease of access to Healthcare, and I've been involved in developing and evaluating health education interventions in schools, in particular around HPV vaccination, which we showed made a huge difference to the young people and uh, when they um, face ex getting their vaccinations in schools. So um, we're also developing um, work looking at adolescents' use of digital health information. So this is a you know, really important area that we need to tap into because it's a, you know, the natural environment for this age group. They look for information around their health online and we've identified that um, they experience some challenges in getting accurate information, the right information to answer their health questions. And um, so we're looking at developing um, co-design interventions to help them do effective searches.